Hello and welcome to the webinar Wednesday. Today our topic is secure your data and save money with LTO and LTFS solutions for backup and archive. My name is Dr. Mark Batschkus from Archiware and with me is my guest Harold Könders from Overland Tandberg. Hi Harold. Hi Mark. Thank you very much for having this on webinar Wednesday. You're welcome. So there's a lot of open questions that uh, need to be answered somehow. How do I find files, maybe years after they have been created? How to secure important files and media for the long term, sometimes for years or decades? How much storage is needed to do that? And how can I keep things simple so that everybody can easily work with that? And some challenges go along with that question. Sometimes there's no dedicated IT stuff. Then there's often manual processes involved in managing the data. That's always tricky. Then there's limited insight on the data. How much files do you have? What is the average file size? How many big files? How many small files? Uh, where do they come from? There's often a limited budget to deal with all of them. And this all is um, also happening while the data is growing. I would like to take a step back and talk very briefly about the difference between backup and archive, because that's uh, of relevance here. And it's good that everybody has a very clear picture in mind of what the difference is. So backup and archive. Backup is a duplication of files for daily production. So this protects ongoing production data. Archive is a migration of finalized files or completed projects. So everything that has been done and completed in one way or another. Backup is a cyclic process that overrides itself after the retention time is reached. And you, of course, as a user, specify the retention time. Whereas archive is usually a continually growing process. The storage perspective for backup is short to midterm, where the storage perspective for archive usually is long term sometimes very long. The backup recovers lost or deleted files where the archive offers opportunity to reuse reference and monetize existing files also um, to comply with certain regulations. So as a result, we can say backup and archive both are needed to protect the data. Backup, protect ongoing production, everything that has completed migrates over to the archive and the archive takes care of long-term preservation. So the solution we are going to talk about in more detail today is Archivea P5 as a data management platform that offers one solution for archive, backup, and cloning in its products. You see that in a minute. Together with Overland Tanberg, LTO tape, and RDX removable storage solutions that are compatible with Archivea P5, and there's lots of options that we will mention here. So this is our agenda. The solution benefits um, is a list of things that we will go through step by step. Backup and archive in one solution is the first. How to find files fast, sometimes years later. Maximum security, built-in features of LTO tape. Low entry point, easy scaling, how do you scale a solution? And archiving pays off. And at the end, the partnership of Archiware and Overland Tanberg. So we are going to start out with the first point here, backup and archive in one solution. Archiware P5 is, as I mentioned, a software platform consisting of four products. The first one being P5 Archive to migrate data offline to disk, LTO tape, or cloud storage. P5 Backup is a full-featured backup solution for servers to backup to disk, LTO tape, and cloud. P5 Synchronize is a replication solution or a cloning solution to create data availability for mostly time-critical data. And P5 Backup to Go is a workstation-specific backup solution. 
So today we are talking mostly about the first two products, P5 Archive and P5 Backup, because both of them support disk, tape, and cloud storage. Both of them have setup assistance that help with setting it up and getting it up and running within minutes. Uh, both have a browser interface. Both of them run on Mac, Windows, Linux, QNAP, Synology, Netgear, FreeNAS, and TrueNAS. So basically all relevant platforms are available with them. And both of them are compatible with all Overland Handwerk tape drives and tape libraries. This already brings us to our next point, how to find files fast and how do you do that sometimes years later? P5 Archive has some media asset management like features that help to find and locate files later. So customizable metadata fields and metadata menus is part of that. So you can have a description, you can have technical metadata that might be generated by a recording device or a camera and can be searched for later. You can import metadata from the file header to populate those fields. There are thumbnails that can be displayed and proxies of video clips. There's a combined search feature to uh, search for specific files. And if you use them with a tape library with multiple drives, you can have tape cloning that creates two identical tape sets and tape parallelization that basically multiplies the throughput. Additionally, encryption, of course, is built in and can be used. And um, as of recently, we have our own LTFS driver that um, has full library support and is ISO and IEC compliant. So how does it look in the interface for the user? So this is a short glimpse of the interface that you will see in the live demo. On the left-hand side, you see the traditional file list. And in case this would be office data or Excel sheets or um, just any form of uh, data that is not media, then this file list would be enough. But in case it is uh, media and things that you can actually preview, then you can switch on the preview mode here that you see in the middle thumbnails of the still images. And on the right-hand side, you see an enlarged selected asset with the metadata fields that come with it. And those metadata fields, as I mentioned before, can be customized. So you can have more or less of them. You can have different ones. You can have more description fields or more technical metadata, depending on your specific requirements. So this is an important part because every company basically has different requirements for finding files, different queries that they want to do later on files. And so this customization option is very important. And here on the top of the interface is the combined search um, that helps you to use all of that. And to make archiving even easier, there's an add-on that offers drag and drop archive and restore called the P5 Companion app. And this is how it looks. So on the right-hand side, you see the interface. It's basically kind of a window interface. You can drag and drop um, directories or single files on top of this window to send them to archive. And then they will create, send them to archive and create a little stub file that will be left over. And this stub file, if you double click it, will show again the preview if available and the associated metadata. I would like to show a brief um, comparison of the P5 native format on LTO tape versus the LTFS format that we support with our own LTFS driver, as mentioned. So of course, the P5 native format has an advantage here. It has been out there for many years and has uh, been in use in thousands of installations. Uh, we can offer more technical support here for uh, specific features than are possible in LTFS format. But LTFS format, of course, as you know, has this last point here in, as an advantage to manufacturer independent restore. So you can hand it over to anybody that can use a free LTFS driver to read the files later. If that is relevant to you, you 
or your customer, you have to decide on your own. And in the demo, I'm going to show quickly how this looks like with a free LTFS driver and how a tape actually shows up. This already uh, brings us to our next step in the agenda, maximum security. So there's a number of features that are basically part of LTO and Harold is going to tell us more about that. Well, thank you very much uh, again, uh, Mark. Uh, yeah, as, as you and I uh, know, and probably after the webinar, everyone knows, uh, tape storage has changed and improved enormously. Uh, the way tape connects to other storage protocols, and in this way, uh, leads to an efficient solution, uh, leads again to the growth of the use of tape. But let us check all written details over here. Why is tape storage so safe? We start with the read after write verification. It ensures that correctness of a write by verifying the written content via an additional read immediately after the write completes. So simply put two heads directly after each other. So tape drives have a built-in error correction. And also very elaborate routines for reading data correctly again. And if a tape shows an error, it will make many attempts to read the problem block and report this error so that the data owner knows that an error is being written. In any case, there are fewer writing errors, which leads to enormous efficient data storage. And at point three, the so important air gap. Talking about maximum security, the air gap and offside. And now we come to the essence of using removable media, such as tape and RDX storage. An air gap backup and recovery strategy means very much ensuring that at any given time, one copy of your organization's data is, yes, put offline and offline and offsite. So disconnect of the network and cannot be accessed. If a file or system of files has no connection to the internet or LAN, it can't be remotely hacked or corrupt. And this enables storage of a sanity copy that is immutable. By now, we have all heard of the 3 to one backup strategy, which simply means that you should have at least three copies of your data. And here we are talking about your production data and two backup copies. The copies should be stored on at least two different kinds of media with one copy of site for disaster recovery. And that's a good start to disaster recovery plan. But what if ransomware compromises administrative passwords or domain info? Yes, that can be corrupt, those backup copies. Adding, so, and adding another step product, the data from further damage. The backup rule is now three, two, one, and an extra one. It's good for an uncapped copy of your data with an emphasis of online, offline, meaning removable data. This could look like this. You have one copy of site, one cloud, or a NAS replication, or removable media. And there's a copy offline. One only removal media like LCO tapes and RDX cartridges guarantee that the data is completely disconnected and secure. Okay, next topic, tape cloning. And the ability to create an extra copy of your ta tape with tape cloning. Cloning data or a complete file system creates a failover solution for time critical setups by having an extra clone or copy. Uh, next, offsite storage. And again, the ultimate protection against disasters by having an offsite copy of your data at any time. Or what can you tell uh, about the proven shelf life? Well, it's at the 30 years guaranteed by the vendor. So again, 
as a resume about the LTO security layers. The solution will offer you read after write checks, an error correction, the air gap, tape cloning, and furthermore, offsite storage and the proven shelf life of, yes, 30 years guaranteed by the vendor. Try to beat that. Thank you, Mark. Yes, next slide is about the LTO generations. So let's talk about the tape advantage. LTO technology remains unrevealed in terms of cost for capacity, reliability, portability, and security. And it continues to play a crucial role in data protection. And already for a long time. Tape has grown not only in capacity, but also in possibilities. And as we can see on this slide, write and read speeds increase. The upcoming LTO 9 reaches a speed of 400 Mbit per second and offers 18 terabyte of native storage, 45 terabyte of compressed storage. And very important to know, the return on investment also grows as the data size grows, and it does. The old tape material, MP or medical particle, was subject to corrosion. But this changed with the use of the new tape material, barium ferrite. So corrosion is no longer an issue. A more and better read and write tape heads lead to more and safer data. The LTO, map, LTO roadmap is clear. We can expect more generations of LTO tape, which could lead to a stunning 100 plus terabyte at one single tape cartridge. Imagine that. The LTO tape solution can also complete as a disk-based storage system by providing an offline or backup option. This means that your data can remain protected in the event of malware of a data security breach. The metadata-driven search and storage arguments make tape storage act faster from any position. Waiting times that are known from the old tape totally disappear. So this brings us also already to our fourth point in the agenda, low entry point, easy scaling. How do you scale? A solution and uh, how does it look? So we have uh, the solution built of P5 archive and uh, could also be P5 backup, they go together if you want to, plus um, either single drive or tape automation products of Overland Tenberg. So that's what we're talking about in more detail. And here are some solution examples and price points, especially to give you an orientation how this can be done in reality. So the P5 Desktop LTO Edition is the smallest license bundle that we offer for a single LTO drive. And this, together with a single uh, SAS drive, comes to a price point of a complete solution around 3,100 euros. So that's the entry level. But this is independent of the number of tapes that you write. So somebody can write uh, dozens or even hundreds of tapes with this solution and can build quite a huge archive with that. So I would say this is a relatively small price point for the power of the total solution that is offered. Next step is a 24 slot library and uh, License bundle that goes with it, the P5 Archive Edition, includes again P5 Backup and P5 Archive, so you can perform both. And this offers you 60 terabytes of data always available in the tape library. And again, you can take tapes out of the library to increase the capacity. Complete solution price point starting at 7,800 euros. Next typical. Um, Solution size is a 40 slot library, the Neo XL40, and the P5 Professional Edition. Again, P5 Backup and P5 Archive for up to two drives. The complete solution comes up at around 13,000 13, euros. And of course, there are bigger and smaller and in between 
um, solutions available. We just wanted to give you a rough orientation of a small, medium, and bigger solution. And of course, you can get a lot bigger than this. To be able to uh, play around and simulate license bundles with RQYP5, there's a product configurator available online on our website. If you go to the website and up um, in the corner for the navigation menu, then you see the product configurator showing up. And below is a partial screenshot of the product configurator where you can select the functionality that you want, then enter uh, drives and slots and so on for possible tape library. And this gives you licenses, license bundles, and the end pricing in euros, US dollar, or British pounds. So with this, you can simulate any license combination. You can say, I want to be a bit bigger, a bit smaller, what happens with the pricing, and so on. So for any of the hardware products that you are looking at for building a solution with. And uh, with this, we come to a short introduction of the single drive of Overland Handberg, and Harold will tell us more about that. Yes, yes, Mark, thank you. Um, the, the easiest way uh, to protect your data is to get it stored simply and cost-effective by using a single tape drive. So all the advantages of using tape in a tape library are also applicable here, but you do not have access to multiple tape cartridge slots. So you are the one who's chasing the tape if there's a need for it. The tape can be stored off-site or offline. But one of the main advantages of removal media is to have large amounts of data on a cartridge, whether it's a tape on an RDX cartridge, can be transferred offline rather than online. This data transport method has been used for a long time in the broadcast and media industry, but is increasingly being used in other industries like healthcare, public transportation, research, and many other industries. Moving data to a cloud, even if it's about many terabytes, no problem at all. Use tape or RDX removable media for safe data transportation. And also, on single drives, the open format LTFS can be used, where data drag and drop is, of course, available, but also warm the right ones, but read many time services available. Tape encryption ensures that your data can be only read by you. And the tape manufacturer guarantees 30 years durability and three years warranty. And advanced exchange services is possible on the LTO7, LTO8 single internal external drives. Next slide, please. And happy to show you our NEO storage loader on the left and the NEO T24 tape library on the right. So which offers space for eight tape cartridges. With the upcoming LTU9, that will be 144 terabyte of native storage. And on the right, at the 24 slot tape library, which offers gross and allows the use of two drives instead of one so that two different jobs can be performed. And of course, the both are LTO 9 ready. And we are proud to present the Overland Tenberg Neo XL series. See how our XL40 is scaling, starting with 40 slots and scale up to 280 by installing new cells. In every shell, three more tape drives can be installed as well. Besides the XL40, we see its bigger brother, the Neo XL80 on the right, from 80 to 560 slots, and from six up to 42 drives. It will offer data center size, data protection, and security. This solution will offer you, with the use of the L29, more than 10 petabytes of native storage. That's why public cloud providers use tape storage for data lake and archive purposes. Both solutions are available with SAS and fiber channel connections. And let's talk about the other removable storage solution. Yes, RDX. At Overland Soundback, we offer you two industry standards for removable cartridge technology, the RDX and LDO. 
as you know, both scale to larger appliances. RDX is disk-based and has the volume of futures. It is ruggedized. It's a disk-based storage product. It's offering data cartridges from 500 gig to 5 terabyte. And it's using USB 3 or SATA 3 connections. And it's a very portable product. And with the use of external uh, USB 3, there are no requirements for an external power supply. It offers power encrypt hardware encryption for SATA 3 drives. And it's fully backward and forward read write compatible. And it's a logical step away from external hard disks. So bringing large amounts of data without using any bandwidth to or from the cloud or different workspots are no problem with RDX. It's the same for tape storage. RDX is used within many industries. We offer the single drive quick store and the larger RDX quick station four and eight. These are network attached removal disk solutions and offer you rate protection and able to offer several different tape library emulations and configurations. You see, all solutions offer you air gap possibilities, helping with data transport without the use of bandwidth, offer warm services, and keeping data safe in a very affordable way. Thanks, Mark. This already brings us to our next step in the agenda, archiving pays off. So archiving pays off in multiple ways. First, it reduces the search time for files, because if you have only one place, the US like to call that the single source of truth uh, concept, when you archive everything that has been completed, uh, then you only have one place to look for files and you have the comfortable um, archive catalog of ArchivePy 5 then you can find files easily. It saves storage expansion cost because you don't have to expand your production storage continuously because your archive all the completed projects away. You migrate them to the archive so the production storage can stay at the same size. This, of course, saves money. And since the production storage stays as a reasonable size, um, it reduces the backup size and the runtime of this production storage. And that makes it again more flexible and again saves money for the backup storage. It increases trust of customers because customers usually assume that all the data that they have been brought to a company um, will be available at any time when they return. So they might return to a company and say, can you do something again with the data that we handed you over two years ago, three years ago, or whatever. And uh, this can be problematic if there's no organized archive in place, but with an organized archive, that's easy. You can find those files in minutes. Archiving has the, on LTO tape has the lowest total cost of ownership because LTO tape is so affordable. So it's around 10 euros per terabyte that you have to pay for LTO tape and that's unrivaled in any professional storage. So archiving to tape pays off especially and we just want to have a look at a typical scenario. The light gray bar here is uh, for RAID storage and the dark gray is for tape storage. So uh, of course, disk uh, begins uh, with a cheaper uh, price because you buy only the um, capacity that you need right now. And then it scales at a constant factor because you basically multiply the capacity and multiply the cost. Tape, um, on the other hand, is uh, needs some investment in the beginning to buy tape hardware and uh, a software to manage it, like p 5 And then it scales a lot cheaper. And in the end, if you go beyond 300 terabytes, in this example here, 360 terabytes, the difference is quite considerable between 60,000 euros here for disk uh, RAID storage, professional grade RAID storage, and around 20,000 euros for the tape solution. So this is quite considerable and doesn't even take into account the reduced cost for cooling, uh, power cost, and so on. 
So the investment pays off and actually saves money. Uh, it offers the option of reuse, reference, and monetization of files. That's important when some files might become historic or might be reused in specific production processes. Lowest price per terabyte, I already mentioned, around 10 euros per terabyte. The more capacity you have, the bigger the savings are. And increasing disk capacity, on the other hand, is more complex. You need um, to maybe modify administration and you need more X space and so on. So this can be quite complicated. Tape offers an air gap built in basically. So maximum protection against malware and any attacks because there's a physical gap in between and the shelf life of decades that was already mentioned. So with this, we come already to uh, the partnership of RQware and Overland Tentberg. So we work together since many, many years, and our partnership goes back to even decades ago. Uh, RQware sold already more than 17,500 17, licenses worldwide. Uh, Overland Tentberg has tens of thousands of installations, uh, lots of patents in the storage field and patents pending, and uh, all the tape drives and tape libraries that Overland Tenberg produces and the RDX devices <clears throat> are compatible with Archiware P5. So with this, I want to switch to a quick live demo to give you an impression of um, how this actually looks like in reality. So you see here, backup, backup to go, synchronize and archive. Those are the four products. They are all enabled since they're in color. You can select to buy uh, one or two or three or all four products. That depends on the requirements and uh, your setup. So um, I want to create in the finder here, I have a folder, best archive, Oland Tenberg copy. There are some media files in here and I would like to duplicate that to create a folder that was not here before. Um, it's called copy two. And I want to now manually archive that. So manual archiving gives me gives me uh, the option of selecting files manually. The session was too long open, so we have to open it again. Manual archiving. So you have a file picker here that you can select files. And I just created this specific copy to folder here that was not existing before. And I can send that to archive now. I have the choice of having multiple archive plans. They could go to either separate target storage or can have separate parameters. In some companies, you want to separate specific data sets, like for instance, in most companies, the financial data will be only accessible for people in a specific hierarchy in administration, whereas the, the public relations or the brochures or product information will be available to all departments. So here I have the choice of two uh, archive plans. One is archive to LTFS that I used before and will show you the result of later and archive to disk that I'm using here right now. I could add metadata. So those are the metadata fields that I created for this demo and could say, um, this is the uh, webinar um, copy of this archive here. And this will be stamped on all the files that are part of this job. So now I can switch to the job monitor that would show me that this Job is in progress. All the completed jobs drop down here in this section. We have a simple traffic light schema in place. So green light, everything fine. Yellow light, there was a minor error. Red light, there was no connection to the storage or nothing working at all. So you can at a glance easily see that all was working well. And if you want to see the details, you just double click on it and you see the details of this specific job and what was actually being archived at a specific point in time. So where are the files right now? You switch to a restore here and restore from archive because we archived something. 
and then we have this default archive. So I switched on uh, the gallery and information. You can switch that off in case somebody has only, let's say, office data or maybe just financial data or maybe uh, measurements or uh, data points or whatever it might be, then you probably don't need um, a preview of an asset like here where you have media assets. So you can switch them on and off. You can use them or not use them just to make sure that this is all possible. So this is the um, small data set that I archived. And you can see there's the webinar tag here that was stamped on all the media that were part of this job. And you see the dimensions were actually imported automatically from the file header and the same with the color space. There was no camera here in this data set at, on the files. And you can go through them and see that they're all part of this small archive job. So um, the imp interesting part is now, if you want to search for something specifically, um, we could say, for instance, uh, we enter here something and let's say we have a camera that is called, let's call it Sony. Oops. Let's call it Sony so that we have something unique on this um, asset here. Uh, and we can search, switch on the search here and say we have something in the description that starts with web. And then we want to add another criteria and say the camera uh, is a Sony. And then we would say find, and then there's only this asset that has both criteria fulfilled. So you can have multiple criteria here for a search uh, using any of the specified metadata fields. As I said before, there could be descriptive metadata so that a person would have to fill in like what product is uh, uh, in a specific uh, video or what landscape is it, what weather conditions, whatever, something like that. Uh, or it could be technical metadata that is visible in the file header, like color space or um, camera lens and so on. Again, uh, as I said, this can be used in many ways. This uh, We show it here with the, for the media field because we have many media customers. But as I said, we already have lots of other customers in other industries and they use it for their purposes with or without the preview here. So that's not technically necessary. Now I would like to um, quick do a restore here of a file. So I have um, a restore folder here that I would like to quickly empty. So there's an empty restore folder and I would like to select some files here and would say I would like to restore them. There's a restore selection, like a shopping basket feature, where I could say I want to have this image and that image and maybe the LTO tapes. Of course, they could be from different archives, different points in time, different uh, places here in this archive catalog and so on. So I just do this quick demo so that you have an impression of how the process actually works. I want to relocate that here, as I mentioned before, to this restore folder, which is here. Select the restore folder so that you can easily spot it here showing up in this window. So now press next. If we would have a tape library here and the tapes would not be in the library, maybe move to a secure place or to a safe or another location, then we would get a message here, please put in tape number this and that. And this could also be sent to an administrator person so that he knows that something needs to be done. So in this case, everything is available and uh, we switch again to the job monitor to show what is going on. And this is a very quick job and you should see the files showing up here. So we have the files that we selected restores. So what we did here was basically a full round trip. We archived some files. <clears throat> we added metadata to the files. 
to be able to search for that later. And uh, we searched for a specific set of files and we restored a number of files here back from the archive, in this case to a restore folder. It could be to the original location or to any other location. Just to give you a quick glance of the other things that are available here, um, of course, for operations, it makes sense to have this overview of all the jobs that have been happening recently. Uh, you see the, the size and the directories that were involved. You see the pools that were involved and so on. So an administrator would immediately see if everything's running fine or if you have to fine tune or if something's not working at all because there's a connection not working. Then you see the pool usage how full the pool is, how much storage you have left. And uh, of course, you can later also check for the, the volumes that would be the tape volumes or the disk volumes in case of uh, disk-based archive or backup. So for backup, it, it looks similar. Um, this is um, the setup assistant. You would step through that here. Like for instance, here you would select the data that you need to protect and then it would give you an option of um, creating a storage resource without either disk storage or cloud storage or tape storage or tape library and this would, would create a backup plan and uh, the backup actually looks very similar to um, to the archive there's uh, nothing in that right now here it just doesn't have the preview capabilities. So you just see the file list and you can search for file name, backup date, and so on. Of course, we can create file versions here and snapshots so you can go back to a specific point in time. Let's have a quick look at the options in the archive plan. There are lots of features built into the product that make it very powerful and can create quite complex environments and protect them. So um, here's a, the option of the automatic drop folder archive, watch folder. You can create a watch folder here, either locally or on another client. You can have multiple client connections. P5 needs to be installed there. And then we can um, have a connection that P5 manages, is block compressed and can be encrypted and so on. Could be on a local network, could also be on the van from bigger distances, and you have an associated schedule to go with that. So uh, like in a department, there could be one point in time before the weekend where every files that need to be archived will be put in a specific directory and will be archived over the weekend, just as an example. Then you have certain options how to deal with media. Um, often in uh, media production, there is uh, the traditional schema of having one production on one tape. You can have this with this option here fulfilled. You can have a verify with either using checksums or compare the content. You can delete files automatically or not delete files. In case you have a structure in your source, then you can uh, leave the uh, folders intact and so on. Uh, just for the previews to show you quickly that FFmpeg and ImageMagic are part of P5. And this is uh, the basic setup that you have. Um, and you, if you know what you're doing and if you want to modify the parameters specifically, you can enter your changes here. So with this, you can actually create um, video clips that are uh, smaller than the original ones and can be previewed. So then for the metadata, I have a script here running that uh, imports the metadata from the file header. Maybe just briefly show you that because it's relatively simple structured. This is um, the way it looks. So with the MDLS command, we capture the color space. The dimension is captured from two attributes um, and the camera is also captured from two attributes of the manufacturer and the model of the camera. And this goes into the fields that have been created before in P5 Archive. Um, yeah, here you could see that um, the clients as additional data sources. You can have multiple clients, of course. And uh, here you can also see that 
cloud storage, of course, is an option. So with this, um, I would like to show you quickly, because we talked about LTFS, um, I have another machine connected here in the network that has access to an LTFS, uh, to an LTO drive with an LTFS formatted tape. I um, mounted this tape here uh, through a terminal command. The tape is here as a fuse uh, device mounted. This is the contents of the tape, and you can actually see the previous here in the finder of those images. So this has been archived using P5 archive and the LTFS format chosen so that you can hand over those tapes or anyone with the free driver use can uh, actually access those tapes. I just wanted to point that out briefly. So there's no additional software, not P5, absolutely necessary. Of course, the P5 archive catalog has lots of advantages to actually uh, drill down and find very specific files. I would like to go back to our presentation here and uh, summarize the benefits of the combined solution of Acura P5 and Overland Tenberg, backup and archive in one solution, so with one interface and only one software to learn, you can cover backup and archive, browser interface and setup assistance, all relevant operating system platforms, as I mentioned, Mac, Windows, Linux, and QNAP, Synology, Netgear as NAS platforms, as well as uh, FreeNAS and TrueNAS are available. Excellent pricing for both products, so you get um, a lot of powerful features as a total solution built from Acura P5 and Overland Handberg, full LTFS library support, and compatible with all Overland Handberg libraries and drives. And with that, I would like to come to the Q&A session. Um, and as I said before, you have the option of entering questions in the uh, question panel of uh, GoToWebinar. So I see some things here. Um, how is P5 licensed? So very briefly, as I said, you have the license configurator available, but we charge for the functionality. So P5 Backup, P5 Archive, P5 Synchronizer, and so on. And additionally, with the tape-capable modules, so P5 Backup and P5 Archive, <clears throat> there's a license for the slots in the library and the number of tape drives. But you can uh, online check on any of these combinations and fine-tune your request. Can I do backup and archive to different storage, uh, like tape and cloud? Yes, of course, you can do that. Each module can address multiple storage targets with multiple plans, multiple pools, and so on. How does P5 work with NAS systems like QNAP and Synology? So uh, that's easy because uh, once you have a system of QNAP and Synology, you have access to the app centers. And in the app centers, under the letter A, there's uh, Arcura P5 listed, and you can download and install it from there. And with QNAP, Arcura has a unique feature here because <clears throat> we are the only vendor that can actually archive or backup to tape from a QNAP device. Um, because uh, QNAP uh, chose to remove a certain um, component from the operating system and Arcura P5 can replace that and does replace that. And so we can archive from a QNAP to LTO tape. So is the metadata ingestible? Uh, yes, that's uh, what I showed with the script. So you can automatically capture the metadata and put it in the in the interface. Another question, how many parallel tape drives could be used at one time? Actually, that's um, uh, quite a big number. We have customers using 15 drives at the same time with one job, which basically um, gives you almost 15 times the throughput of a single drive. So you can have multiple gigabytes a second on tape, and P5 takes care of managing and distributing the data to those multiple drives. Of course, usually you want to keep one or two drives 
separate so that you are able to have <clears throat> multiple jobs running at the same time and not multiply all of them. Um, how can you use P5 products together? Um, as I mentioned briefly, we have this P5 synchronized for cloning or replication disk to disk. This can be combined with um, P5 backup to a disk to disk to tape solution. Uh, so this is one popular example how to combine them actually. So um, there is a question here about LTO9 drives and if they can read LTO7 or LTO7M for um, for restore. Um, maybe, Harold, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, that's right, uh, Mark. Uh, no, sorry, um, just one generation back. LTO9 goes back to LTO8. So okay. um, that's, yeah. that's, the okay, that's yeah. not a decision of any of us. That's uh, how the oh. consortium decided to have things going. There's a, a question about uh, RQWare pricing and if it, um, uh, how much software maintenance is included. So there is one year of software maintenance included, which gives you full access to our support and full access to the most recent versions, including all features. And apart from that, you can choose to have software maintenance booked for multiple years. And this costs 15% per year of the original license price. And the first year is, as I said, included. So there's a question about um, a machine, a P5 machine, Linux or Mac connected to LTO via an Atto Thunderbolt 3 converter. Yes, that's what we do here all the time. So this works, of course. Um, And oh yes, uh, maybe how we license the, the data sources. So if um, you have something, so the P5 server is uh, for us the machine that has direct attached connection to the target storage for archive. So that could be a Mac mini or a Windows server, Linux server, whatever it is, but it has direct attached contact to the LTO drive or the LTO library. So this is the P5 server. Then you can have direct attached storage as a data source, or you could have storage that is mounted there. It just depends on the reliability and throughput of the connection. That is also possible to send to archive. And if you have something either remotely or a large data set that you want to reliably connect, then um, we recommend having a P5 client installed on the other machine and actually pick up the data and P5 controls the pipeline to for maximum throughput and maximum security to transfer the files to the P5 server. If you don't have more questions, Mark, I have um, a question of a customer who spoke this morning uh, because he thought um, this P5, Archer P5 is a typical uh, broadcasting media product. Um, I'd like to say once more, um, it's really fit to do the broadcasting media job, but several other industries are working with uh, RGRP5. Um, and I have some examples for um, which industries it are. Um, we are having business with the um, research and science industry, uh, several schools, even CCTV companies working with governments. Um, we have several manufacturer companies. Um, a lot of marketing research and marketing departments. So um, not only broadcasting media, but several other industries as well. Yeah, and thank you for, for that remark. Um, there's another question here. How do you back up the backup catalog uh, for you, say, 10 years from now to find a few um, on a particular tape? So the thing is a backup should never be stored for 10 years in our perspective. So a backup is a rotating, as I mentioned before, a rotating mechanism and overrides itself after the specified retention time is reached. And usually this retention time is either one month or two months or six months, but never 10 years. Because if you want to keep it for 10 years, then it's an archive. 
So because th uh, there are lots of completed data, completed projects and so on, and they need to migrate to the archive. So once they're part of the archive, then this archive catalog becomes very valuable. And you're completely right, this needs to be backed up. So the catalog file has a, a built-in mechanism in P5 to generate an automatic backup of this catalog. Because in case the server goes down with its local storage where the archive catalog resides, then you need to have a backup copy of this catalog because in the catalog is all the metadata and uh, lots of other things stored that are important to keep. So there's an automated um, backup built into P5 Archive. There are some other questions here about sales representative in specific regions. Please contact me directly for that. And then somebody asked for uh, configurations of servers so that they have enough throughput uh, for the archive and backup. Uh, P5 itself is quite modest in the system requirements. You can check them on our web page. Uh, the thing is that for, for each job that is running at the same time, so in case you have a, a bigger company that has multiple backup plans or maybe multiple archive plans, then uh, we would recommend to have one core available per job running at the same time to have optimum uh, performance. So in case you want to have six or eight jobs running at the same time, there should be six or eight cores independent of the operating system that also needs one or two cores to be available. Uh, RAM is not critical and uh, also the CPU performance as such is not critical, but the number of cores uh, makes it much more comfortable. Yes, I think that was it so far. If there are questions left over, if you come up with questions later, um, here are our addresses, so please send us an email. Thank you very much for attending and for your questions. So please feel free to send us an email with questions that might have left over or, or occurred later. We are happy to help you with that. Uh, thank you, Harold, and uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, thanks again, uh, Mark, for having us on webinar Wednesday. Thank you again. We really enjoying our partnership. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.